In this video, we'll begin introducing some important probability distributions that arise often in practice. We'll begin by describing two uh, discrete distributions, and we'll begin by considering the following problem. Consider that you have an event with two possible outcomes, which we'll denote by A and B. The probability of outcome A is given by lowercase p, and the probability of outcome B is given by Q, which, uh, since there are only two possible outcomes, must be 1 minus P. We are then interested in calculating the probability of getting outcome A x times out of a total of n independent trials. And we would like to uh, derive the, dist the probability distribution from which we could calculate the probabilities of each one of these outcomes. So for each number of times A comes up, we can associate a probability of that outcome with this new distribution. So what you have to consider is that for any, and this is important, any sequence of events for which A occurred X times, the probability of that is given by the probability of getting A times the number uh, to, to the power of uh, the number of times that A occurred times the probability of outcome B to the power of the remaining trials. So as a simple example, you can uh, imagine flipping a coin, the probability, if it's a fair coin, the probability of getting heads is one half. The probability of getting two heads is one half for the first one. And you can have a probability of one half for the second one. So it's one half times one half. And this is where this comes from. So if you have X, A occurring X times, then you have to raise P to the power of X. Likewise, if A happened X times, then B must have happened N minus X times. So you have to raise the probability of B to the power of N minus X. However, since we're only interested in the total number of times that A occurred, and not in the order in which it occurred, we also need to consider the number of permutations of these sequences. Okay, so. total number of times A occurred. So for example, let's say we had five trials and we had A, B, A, B. So over here you had three A's. We did the five trials and we got this sequence you again have three A's. You can also get something like this. You still have three A's. So normally this will give us three separate sequences for which A occurred three times. We're only interested in the total number of times that we got three A's. The order in which they happen doesn't matter to us. So what this means is we need to consider the number of permutations that you can have in these types of sequences. So if you have n trials and x of them are outcome a, how many different permutations of a can you have in those sequences? So 
Okay, so you can think of this essentially normalizing over the permutations, if you will. It turns out that there, there are this many uh, different sequences. for which A occurs X out of X times out of N trials. So this is N factorial divided by X factorial times N minus X factorial, where remember that N factorial is shortened for N times N minus one times n minus two, times three, times two, times one. Okay, this is, you can find this in different notation. So you can either write it like this, it's sometimes written like this, where it's called the binomial coefficient or sometimes written like this, where this is usually referred to as n choose k, or n choose x, sorry, in this case. So out of n trials, you choose x of them to have come, to have, uh, for which the outcome was a. Okay, so this factor lets us calculate the number of sequences for which a occurred three times without regard for when A occurred. So this, putting all this together, results in something called the binomial distribution, sometimes known as bin and P. And this has a probability mass function where the probability that a random variable is equal to lowercase x is equal to n choose x, the probability of one outcome to the power x times the probability of the other outcome for the remaining trials. And here, x has to be between zero and the total number of trials and P is a probability, so it has to be between zero and one. And introducing a little bit of notation, if a random variable is distributed according to a binomial, distribution. So by distributed, I mean, uh, it's the probability of its events happening is described by this probability mass function. Then we denote that as X with a little tilde in and P. So this tells you the two parameters of our binomial distribution and number of trials and the probability of one of the outcomes. Some important properties of the binomial distribution is that its expectation value or mean is equal to the number of trials times the probability of an event occurring. Its variance is equal to N times P times Q. So the number of trials times the probability of uh, one of the outcomes times the probability of the other outcome. And we won't uh, introduce the other two moments 
that we saw. These are the most useful ones for our purpose, our purposes. In the next video, we'll go through uh, an example showing how we can use the binomial distribution to calculate probabilities.